we look at the past, I would hope we can get inspired by looking at the craftsmanship and looking at the details and long to build better because we see beautiful things like this. Gustav Stickley, uh, this guy's crazy, okay? This guy is uh, uh, a, a magician. <laughs> this guy's a fool. This guy is uh, a, a, a um, dreamer. Um, this guy's a risk taker. Uh, and yet, he is the spokesman for the arts and crafts ideal. He is the spokesman for uh, all of the, the, this style and, and era that's going on here. And you'll see, as, I'm, that as we study the, his magazine, that he didn't write. Um, he's, he's an amazing figure. So um, I talk about him capturing the spirit of the era. He starts a magazine in 1901 called The Craftsman. And uh, it's not written by him. It's written by a... Uh, art history professor at Syracuse named Irene Sargent. She writes it for the first five years. She's, she's expressing these ideals. Um, he's a furniture maker. He is a, a son of immigrants. Um, and he and five brothers are the ones that start the Stickley Furniture Companies that some of which are still around today. He starts out as an immigrant. He, he, he learns from his uncle how to, how to build. Uh, and, and he represents the immigrants we've been talking about that are moving over from Germany and all these other things that start so many great things in America. He's part of that, that era. 1893, there's a panic, uh, a financial panic. It's a crash that really lasts until 1900, 1899. And that as they start to come out of that, um, he kind of catches lightning in a bottle. In that, he kind of had a standard furniture company, but he sees these styles changing. And when he launches his furniture catalog, it's different than anybody else has. It's, it's these, the Morris chair that I was showing you. It's these simple, clean lines. And it was, it was uh, you know, <laughs> it was at the perfect time and the perfect place. Um, he gains a lot of influence because, and, you know, he is the Instagram influencer of his day, right? He, you know, had a million followers kind of thing. Um, and, and, and I talked about how brief this period is that begins and then ends. First catalog in 1901, last catalog was in 1916. He's actually bankrupt in 1915. And so he has a catalog in 1916. He sells the farm in 1917. He's done. Okay, so realize that this is a brief period of time. Um, this is the 1909 catalog, but you see, you know, how things were expressed, and you can get a Morse chair for thirty-four dollars. Um, but this was this was his catalog. This is what he was expressing. It's it's ironic that he has so much influence in the period. He really he wasn't an architect, and he really only is involved in a couple houses. His first house in Syracuse, New York, before he used, moved to New York City, was a uh, Victorian turn-of-the-century house. He remodeled it in like 1903, so the interior, they're saying, which still isn't around anymore, uh, they're trying to restore it, but uh, that was one house, right? Well, this was, his, this was his other house. And so you think about him as being so influential in the period, but it really wasn't his architectural styles that were so influential. It was the ideals that he expressed and, you know, what he was going to do was he was going to start a uh, technical school for boys in New Jersey. And so he buys all this land in New Jersey. He's got his office building in New York. Um, this was going to be the cafeteria clubhouse. It ended up being his house, but he had to sell this uh, uh, after he went bankrupt. If you look at his magazine, so from 1901 to 1915, he's writing in his magazine. These are the kind of articles that are coming out. Uh, suburban house for a wide lot with little depth. Plain house that will last for generations. Um, they are, uh, they, they totally are talking about a way of life, okay? They aren't talking about your house needs to be this style. One of the ironic things is he tells people how to build furniture themselves, right? You wouldn't think that as a furniture maker, he would tell people how to make their own furniture, but it's like he didn't care about making money. It was like he didn't care. It was all about the, the magic of the era and, and how things came together. So this is where, you know, he's a fool, but he's brilliant. And he's so, you know, cement, half, cement house with half timber construction. 
right? You wouldn't hear anything about cement houses in the arts and crafts period, right? And so, but he was, you know, really pushing the envelope for design and style and, and how things came together. This is the table of contents, the craftsman you can buy. This is perfect, the simplification of life, right? That is, you know, totally what he was about and, and totally what the ideals he was expressing. Uh, two inexpensive but charming cottages for women who want their own house. Yes. Hey. <laughs> My kind of guy. <laughs> right? I mean, cutting edge in 1906, right? To be writing that stuff. A lot of stuff about the garden. And then, you know, the craftsman idea, you know, the, the, and these were written by him, which is so funny. Um, he, he cast the vision and then he brought all these people underneath him to kind of execute it and take it back, take it out. And so now there's a long article in this book about Irene Sargent and who she was and, and how she helped. But she really was writing these articles that are so influential to this period, and this time. And then this is the, the, the dreamer part in him. So. When he moved to New York, I can't remember whether he bought or leased this building, but this basically is the Craftsman building, okay? There was a restaurant, a club room. It was basically like a department store in 1908, you know, 1909. Um, Craftsman furniture displays, right? He had all this stuff going on. Look at this. He's got an ad for it. This is Building Age magazine. You can't see that. It says February 1915. That's the year he commits, you know, declares bankruptcy. And so, uh, and this is where, you know, what were you doing? You know, like, why would you, you know, throw all your money into this thing? Because the other irony is that his 1916 catalog had Colonial Revival furniture in it. So he had, he already, as a business guy, he saw the writing on the wall that the arts and crafts furniture was over and he was going to do Colonial Revival stuff, right? Because he had to sell things. And that as a pure, you know, speaker and, you know, influencer of this era, you know, he was trying to do this. <laughs> anyway, it's confusing, right? It's, it's like, what were you doing, dude? Um, I don't know whether he could have made it last longer. Uh, as we talk about uh, the gamble, uh, Green Brothers out in California, they don't last much longer than this period, too. There is totally a change in taste. But anyway, he's a fascinating figure to me. Um, Gustav Stickley and, and what he was thinking and what he built um, and how he did it. These are craftsman style homes we're very familiar with. Uh, I've always called them kind of craftsman bungalow prairies kind of thing and kind of grouped them all together. There's a lot of similarities. Um, this is from Virginia McAllister's book. This is, uh, you know, from a, from a home builder's catalog. Uh, but these details, I mean, these porches are just so... Um, typical. I just did a video on tapered columns and how they do that. Uh, the brackets, the eaves, uh, the ideas that they're expressing, right? These were simple houses uh, and beautiful houses. Examples of them built from early. And the other interesting thing is that a lot of these catalogs are 20s and 30s, right? They start to stop being built in the 30s uh, or late 20s. Um, not many are built in the 30s, but the style of the house really carried on for quite a bit of the time, certainly longer than the furniture did. These are some examples in Fort Worth, um, how they might be expressed. Uh, the simple everyman house, this is in Arlington Heights, that's in Fairmount, right? So uh, they're around, and these are the ideals that, uh, that are expressed and are, and, and are so simple and charming and, and lovely. <clears throat> 